Hello team and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a very special guest, uh, also a friend of mine, Ramneet Singh, who is a member of talent acquisition uh, team okay, in a fintech company. So Ramneet as of now has hired a lot of different DevOps engineers for different companies as he has a very different connections to so many different uh, hiring firms also. Okay. So today, as we discussed, uh, I think one day ago that I asked you a lot of questions. You can just share your questions, which you wanted me to ask uh, HR. Uh, so that you can get to know like what are different packages provided what are the uh, like of, uh, impact of career gap and so and so okay so today since we are having Ramneet here and I'm going to ask the questions that you have given me and I hope Ramneet answers us uh, well okay yeah so back to you Ramneet you can introduce us a little bit about yourself sure hi everyone uh, this is Ramneet I'm currently working in one of the fintech based company at Starlet Acquisition and um, I hire different uh, for different tech roles uh, and one of the tech roles uh, is devops as well wherein i've hired around five to six devops folks for my team um uh, it's been an amazing journey hiring devops folks uh, and and the market is currently booming for them uh, so uh, i hope i would be able to help adit today uh, adit as well as you guys today um, in um, knowing uh, more about DevOps uh, and how you can get or grab job jobs in DevOps in a more easier way. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say, I would request Adit to ask questions now. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, team. So before we get started, one more thing I would tell you. Uh, so like uh, Ramlit is also an HR and he has different connections. So there are different firms who are looking for candidates. Okay. To provide the like shortlist basically first level of shortlisting shortlisting so that that re candidate can be referred to certain companies okay so for that i'll be sharing you a form where you need to provide your name email address so and so as well as your resume and if you are shortlisted by the that consulting form then you will be receiving a mail for interviews directly okay so make sure to fill that form that will help you a lot okay yeah so with that being said let's get started so Ramneet, the first question that everyone wanted to know and everyone is so excited for is like, can you give some uh, info about the average packages that we get from like zero to two years of experience, two to three or three to five? This is the most common range where we try to get uh, like uh, uh, hired in a DevOps role. Okay. So what are the average package that um, MNC company or a startup based companies will give for this kind of uh, like years of experience? Right. So uh, for uh, product based companies, uh, Basically, uh, the package revolves around somewhere around when we talk about zero to two years, it's somewhere around, um, you know, uh, 10 to uh, 15. And uh, if you talk about uh, two to three years, it's somewhere around 15 to 22. And uh, three to five years, it's somewhere around, um, you can say, uh, 22 to 30. Uh, for uh, service based companies, which we also call MNCs, Basically, it, with zero to two years of experience, they somewhere around provide four to six years, uh, four to six LPA, and uh, uh, then when we go to upper uh, band, which is two to three years of uh, experience, they somewhere uh, provide fifteen to, uh, I mean, somewhere around eleven to uh, more than that, somewhere around uh, sixteen or seventeen LPA, and uh, when we talk about uh, three to uh, five years of, ex uh, sorry. Uh, three to five years of experience, then of course they they provide somewhere around um, a thirteen to twenty kind of uh, package. So yeah, yeah. So one more thing I wanted to add here. Actually, when Ramneet said that like startup or product based companies, they give like uh, up to like thirty lakhs of package they can give. Okay. So actually, I did not believe, but then Ramneet told that Ramneet has literally his own company has given that much of a package to some DevOps engineers. Then I realized, okay, that this is the reality. That in startups or product based companies, you can actually get a lot of package. But the good thing is that ki you will get to learn a lot in a startup or product based companies, but the uh, workload is little bit more as compared to MNCs. Okay. So if your pre preference is like uh, learning as well as package, then you should definitely join a product based or startup based companies. And if you want to just like uh, starting a career, then product uh, MNC companies are also good. Okay. So next question that uh, I wanted to know Ramneet, like how is the market right now for DevOps people and how will be the future? Like, uh, or like, what like if if it is in demand as of now or, or what will be the future of it okay sure so uh devops is uh doing great uh as of now it's it's, ha it's having very promising future 
you know, considering that the practical application of DevOps are increasing day by day, and every company, you know, prefers to follow DevOps, uh, you know, uh, flow in their projects, right? So, uh, uh, I mean, and I would say it's it's booming right now. And uh, 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 the suggestion which which were, which I would give to our audience uh, would be that if you want to. If you genuinely want to uh, move into uh, you know core DevOps uh, kind of role, uh, ha- I mean try to get more and more exposure towards having experience with multi uh, cloud. Uh, you know, uh, for example, AWS, GCP, Azure, these kind of clouds, which are which companies are using, and especially these product based companies uh, usually look at folks who who have multi cloud exposure. So yeah. Yes, that that's what I also say. Ki, uh, cloud is actually the future. DevOps is also good because DevOps is like cloud. They have modified their services uh, from like DevOps. Okay, from right. DevOps point of view, and they are focusing more to give services towards DevOps. Okay, so if right. you are learning cloud, that is going to be a promising f- future. So next question that I wanted to ask, like DevOps candidates are facing challenge while negotiating the offers. So could you please put some light on how they can justify their expected compensation? and get better offers like how they can ask of uh, what kind of off, like how they can ask specific uh, amount of packages when going for interviews yeah okay so uh, um the big a big mistake that you know candidates usually do is they put a lot of emphasis on numbers while talking to recruiters or direct hiring manager uh i would suggest uh, you know there is an indirect approach wherein you can get good package and make them realize about your worth and what you can bring to the table so all since at the very initial stage you talk about the expected compensation with the recruiters because that's the screening call that that happens they know what you're expecting repeating those those same lines wouldn't make sense here so i would suggest that uh, you know uh, maybe reiterate uh, your worth what you can bring for them in the company what skill sets that you bring are are absolutely yes for the company and um uh, you know and maybe help them understand the kind of projects that you work with are something which is aligned to what company is looking at so um it's it's very uh, uh you know um a wise uh, decision here to make sure that uh, you are um, you know making them realize that you are worth a shot and and why are you standing out from the other 100 candidates there giving the interviews and why you 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 know deserve this kind of package so this is what exactly i would say that you need to fight for your skill sets that you have and make sure that uh, you make them realize in a very very polite way and be very very uh, sensitive while talking to these kind of issues wherein uh, i understand that you know uh, people try to negotiate from company point of view wherein they, they try to save money but uh, of course if you're a good candidate um, they'll not let you go and, and try to uh, figure out if they can offer something best so yeah okay Ramni, tell me one thing like i also used to get confused if i'm asking for a package should mm-hmm. i tell a specified package like i want like 15 lpa or should i specify a range i want 12 to uh, between somewhere between 12 to 15 which which is the best option that you should okay. consider see uh if now it depends from candidate to candidate some people target for any specific number right uh but uh there's one con here wherein company think that the candidate is really rigid right so in case you feel like that company is really good for you also you want to work on this product it's very exciting you'll get to learn a lot um so of course in that case i would suggest give range to them tell them that this is something that i'm uh, expecting this is the exact number but i would be okay if offered this kind of range because uh, if you give the range right they 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 they, uh, they understand uh, your point of view as well and they also think that this candidate would not be rigid he'll be open to negotiate while we'll be uh, get, giving them the offer right and sometimes what happens is when you give the range they try to uh, uh, touch base the uh, maximum range that you've given by offering some kind of variable component as well in it along with fixed right so that also uh, helps you to get kind of package that you're looking at of course that might not be a fixed but yeah i would say don't be rigid if you really like the company uh, just try to share a uh, range with, with the recruiters and they'll figure out what, uh, if, if, of course, you're in under the budget, they'll, they'll offer you that kind of package, of course. 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. One question, which is like so many question people have asked, which is like, hmm. what to do in case of career gap? Like how those people are treated if they are having like two or three years of career gap? Okay. Now, um, here, uh, we need to have very, uh, uh, you know, subtle uh, justification for uh, for having a career gap. Uh, so anyone having two to three years of career gap. must have uh, some kind of sound uh, you know um, reason behind it they should know uh, uh, why they have taken this gap and they should justify companies right because of course two to three years of experience uh, two to three years years of gap experience is 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 questionable uh, you know um, and and every company ask about it so uh, make sure that uh, whenever you talk to recruiters you're ready with with answers as as to why you took uh, this particular decision to uh, take a break it's okay to take a break uh, i mean it's it's totally fine uh, from my point of view as a recruiter uh, i i do make calls to these candidates as well who who have breaks in their uh, resume but but i try to understand why exactly um uh, companies usually do not appreciate people who sit who are sitting idle or haven't done anything la- since last 2 to 3 years because in engineering uh, background it's really important to have practical exposure right and if if you get disconnected from that exposure of course you need to start from very first because in in 2 to 3 years what advancement has came in the market you never know right uh because there's a disconnect so usually company do not prefer candidates having you know 2 to 3 years of gaps but if you have valid reason uh, and in those gap uh, you, you're able to justify that you you worked on those skill sets that that is in the market right now uh, you have those uh, you know knowledge of those uh, modern tools that are existing in the market so um, no one can stop you to, to take the offer so yeah okay okay so if i say ki uh, after the college i was not placed and because of that reason i started doing freelancing so i was working in devops i was using different devops tools and i was doing a freelancing okay, okay. freelancing kind of support so is it better than saying okay i was doing preparation for government job or i was sitting idle so this this would be better right like saying ki i was doing freelancing job yeah but uh, you need to justify that you should have your uh, if you're really doing it uh, you should have papers. yeah you should have papers of those what projects have you worked on they'll they'll ask you those projects you'll have to showcase them yeah. so be very truthful in case you you were idle just tell them that i was idle uh, i uh, maybe uh, you know try out some courses before you g- start giving interviews so you have that knowledge you you should tell them that i was settled, i was i was not doing anything but i do have some knowledge around modern tools that are being used in devops these days so make sure uh, that you are ready before the interviews because no one want to hire uh, you know a candidate who don't have any kind of exposure uh, or knowledge about the modern tools so i would i would be very truthful to you be be you while while you, you'll be giving the justification for this particular question and whatever you are saying to your hiring manager or uh, your recruiters be truthful to it because that goes uh, when you when you give, give the interviews right and uh, in case you end up not answering those questions which you have told that i'm very sure that i know these things it will be a direct reject so yeah next question i wanted to ask like how should we negotiate a uh, long notice period because like usually mnc companies they have a minimum 90 days of notice period and usually nobody want to wait that long okay right. so how should we neg- negotiate with some companies to like uh, like agree for 90 days of notice period or like uh, what should we do in that case right so one uh, uh i mean uh, i w- i would suggest that while you be working in any company make sure that you you begin good connections with your manager uh, you know hr uh, so that while switching they might help you with uh, you know reducing oh, yeah. your notice period so of course good communication with them would help you in such cases and uh, uh, the first approach here should be that you should talk to your manager or him or hr who whoever is the respective spot here and uh, make sure that uh, you try to convince them if 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 this could be negotiated uh, so there are two cases right uh, either you have projects to work upon either there are less projects they are okay with it that you're leaving soon but in either cases you should talk to them first in case you feel like that 
things are not working out there is another option that mncs have that and also you should talk to your current company where are getting hired that um if if i'll have any buyer option which i'll talk to my current company uh, you'll be able to uh, you know offer that amount once I'll, I'll 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 you know buy out my notice period so if they're okay with it talk to your uh, uh, you know hr in the uh, mnc companies wherein uh, usually mnc have this kind of uh, you know uh, policy wherein they they offer buyer options wherein you can buy out your notice period and then uh, get hired but these days of course uh, two days notice uh, these product based companies are accepting two days uh, two months notice so it's fine um, if you can negotiate at least one month of notice okay, yeah. so two options we have in this case for negotiation like first we should either have good connections with our manager or nhr and convince them to like uh, let us leave early our second right. option is we can ask the joining company to go for a buyout option and we can like that new company can pay the uh, amount and using that amount we can leave the company right right also uh, just one thing uh, we usually get confused regarding when this amount will be will be paid from the new company uh, uh, so that you do, don't end up fighting with them so usually what happens is uh, uh, you have to pay that amount to your current company okay. and uh, with with the first payroll uh, <clears throat> the new com- uh, i mean the new company will offer you that particular amount along with your salary so after a month time only you'll get that amount from the new company okay. initially we need to pay then company new company yeah. will give it yeah. back to us okay yeah this will be the approach yeah. got it okay the next question which i wanted to ask like what skill sets do companies look at at while they are hiring for devops engineers what kind of skill sets they are looking for okay so um when i talk about mnc of course mnc do not have that uh you know uh, set criteria they they usually look at someone uh, uh basis the projects that they have so let's suppose they uh, there are some projects wherein they need someone uh, who are very good at azure right uh they have worked with azure cloud uh, uh they they have some bit of knowledge about dockers iac uh, kubernetes right uh, uh so uh they, they 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 look at such such kind of skill sets wherein they are okay if person have very good exposure with azure because the, that is a project requirement usually mnc hiring happens okay so uh, you mean to say like specifically first of all it depends on projects right Plus general devops cic like general devops tools like iac devops sorry yeah. uh, docker kubernetes cicd these are general yeah. and other than that project specification okay Right. So, अच्छा, in in this case, let's say like I'm going to apply. So, should I do this thing? Ki first, I should check the job des- description, and then I should modify my resume with the skill sets that is required. Is it a good thing or not? Okay, of course, that's. Uh, I'll tell you. So basically, uh, it would be good for you if you have that knowledge and you're okay. modifying your resume, right? So, uh, it's very great approach if uh, if you're reading. JD properly putting efforts to edit your resume so that it get shortlisted. Uh, it's easy for you to get shortlisted, uh, you know, in such cases because in resume, in resume, recruiters usually look at skill sets that they're looking for in particular job, and that you can get in JD, of course. But if you don't have that kind of knowledge, don't play around this mm. because it might create problem at the later stage uh, when you get interviewed. and in case by mistake you get hired also by the company and they ask you to work on that particular project wherein that skill set is required you won't be able to do it right and the expectation would be that you know that thing so um so make sure that if you know that uh, particular skill sets uh, it's missing in your resume you haven't mentioned that or forgot to mention it feel free to edit your resume and then send it across uh, okay yeah. Okay, so next question, Ramnit, I would ask you like, what kind of project we should mention in our resume that okay. help us to get hired? Okay, for interviews. Right. So, uh, for experienced folk, uh, I would suggest full stack, real time, and corporate projects are something that we should we should mention. And for freshers, of course, uh, good exposure to uh, full stack projects uh, help them in getting hired for the companies. And uh, Uh, they should also work upon uh, some skill sets like uh, you know docker kubernetes jenkins iac which help them um, like prior experience to it which will help them in getting the jobs better offers of course so yeah okay okay so next i wanted to know like since uh, so many freshers are also our subscriber 
so how can a fresher crack interviews also like uh, this is very uh, common question ki do certifications mandatory or if like if the certifications they are there is there any good impact or bad impact how is it seen okay so uh, see of course uh, certifications for freshers uh, are not mandatory but of course having certifications in your resume is something uh, that creates a good impact right because uh, when a recruiter or hiring manager is screening your resume they they uh, are under the impression that you have uh, gone um, a little beyond uh, and worked around things tried to learn things so that i would say that uh, doing uh, certifications would definitely help you getting shortlisted for the further rounds so yeah okay but like how should a fresher crack interviews like in what ways they should prepare Basically, okay. should they go for like real time full stack projects or what should they should do? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, in in such cases, uh, some internship exposures help. So, uh, prior internship exposure, having uh, uh, you know worked on uh, full you know some full stack real time you know projects definitely helps. Wherein uh, they have worked practically on it, got exposure to it, got trained. you know around around the same and as i suggested earlier as well some skill sets like docker iic ci cd you know kubernetes these kind of uh, skill sets definitely help them in cracking the interviews so uh, at least i mean of course from freshers companies do not expect much but at least basics of it some is something that should be uh, brushed up before going to the interviews so yeah okay so next question that i wanted to know like can a person switch to devops uh, devops roles if they are like previously working with development or any other uh, it sector job how they can switch and like uh, yeah how they can switch and how they can prepare for that sure uh, of course they can switch that that's totally possible if they're working in any id uh, sector job uh, so uh, but you know uh, candidates needs to make sure that they're following the roadmap and preparing well and having hands on experience with whatever skill set needed uh, for devops right and having certifications in such cases would definitely help them so yeah okay great so next question that i would ask you ki uh, what should a fresher from non it background do to get a job in devops what strategy should be followed to like uh, uh, for applying the job as well sure so uh, you know as i told earlier that certifications uh, are not mandatory but having them uh, you know uh, 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 definitely help these devops folks because uh, these days uh, you know companies are uh, asking for uh, you know cloud found uh, you know uh, cloud experiences and having some uh, certifications around cloud foundation would definitely help them and uh, and they're given preference of, uh, among the other talent pool as well right so uh, and also uh, when i talk about how they can uh, you know uh, apply around uh, fresher devops uh, opportunities so of course uh, linkedin is a good place so i would suggest them to be active there and directly reach out to recruiters when they find the opportunities and also uh, uh, preparing a good resume would definitely help so uh, uh, i mean of course they can take take reference from different places uh, to make a resume uh, and showcase their skill sets there so yeah okay so like uh, even though uh, uh, the certifications are not mandatory anywhere as of now right but having them uh, it's it's a good plus right even in case of freshers since freshers uh, they are just out of the college so having a certification at the point that will confirm ki okay you are uh, good at these skills that certification okay. will confirm and uh, companies will prefer those, those those candidates first okay it's a, so having certificate is a is a good way to stand out uh among the other candidates right 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 i'm aligned here okay what are the company uh, company's expectation when they check with uh, culture fitment okay so uh see uh when 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 it comes to culture fitment of course companies look at your behavioral aspect right because uh, every company look at someone who is enthusiastic enthusiastic uh they want to uh, work uh with the same synergy that company is working on they know what kind of mission company is working on and and uh and they are aligned with it right so make sure that when you are appearing in the interviews uh, uh i mean do not have assumption that this is only the technical interview that is going on they also check your culturally fit or not 
and especially in these product based companies who are startups or mid level companies they they usually put a lot of emphasis on this so make sure that uh, whenever you're giving interviews show the kind of enthusiasm uh your skill sets which can help them uh, um you know doing great things at work whatever you are bringing to the table and uh, and of course uh, a lot of positive attitude helps you in getting uh, that job as well so yeah make sure these things are there while you're giving interviews okay so another question that i have how can a senior person with 10 years of experience in infrastructure support switch to devops what is expected from him and what role should they target and how they, how to prepare for an interview right so of course it's a challenge uh, you know as expectation from 10 years of experienced folk would be higher right but of course uh, it's 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 possible for them to uh, you know switch to devops wherein um, you know um, there is a belief that they have experience working with infra support and could uh, and this could work as a brownie point for them and uh, 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 you know if they they focus on learning uh, some aspects uh, which i've also talked about earlier like ci cd iac docker kubernetes monitoring and and cloud of course uh, uh, would definitely help them and uh, of course uh, adit would be the right person to guide you more on this so uh, definitely get in touch with him for this okay. see from my point of view i believe that infrastructure people they are they work very closely with devops So right. if you have already experience working in infrastructure that will be a very good point for you to switch because like you have literally worked very closely and you have already some knowledge on devops so this will be really good and you can like very easily transition to devops but as 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 ramnit said like having 10 years of experience so there will be more expectations from a person with 10 years of experience so you have right. to be prepared for that okay okay yeah another question like could you please help our aspirants with the product based industries they should target for the devops role okay yeah so uh, as we talked about the compensation you know exciting compensation that these companies are offering and you can grab that so it's a good opportunity for you to uh, you know uh, talk to some specific product based uh, industries which offers good compensation uh, so i would name some of them like fintech you know medtech ai based companies saas travel you know food tech e-commerce sports etc so uh, uh, you can of course go and explore uh, on internet about these companies and see if they, if they have opportunities and apply there so yeah yes so so to everyone i wanted to t- uh, specify this fintech it's 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 refers to the companies that are like working in financial technology okay they provide very good amount of packages okay right. other than that we have medtech companies like who are working in medical field and they also provide very good amount of uh, package because they they have a very good profits so they can right. easily give okay other than that as of now like ai is also booming where python is being used so ai is also a very good field okay other than that we have e-commerce sports food tech and travel which you can do a little bit research uh, which companies come under these categories and you can try to apply them apply to them because they provide very good uh, compensations right okay. okay yeah so important very important question can you suggest some good platforms where devops candidates can apply for jobs okay before you answer that uh, one more thing i wanted to tell so as i told ki ramneet is connected to different uh, consulting firms who provide like candidates okay and to different companies and refer them so ramneet has shared me a form which i will share with you so i would request all of you whoever is watching just put your details in that and those details will be shared to those consulting firms and if your resume is good if your skill sets align with the requirements then you will be automatically receiving a mail when referred to different companies okay so that is a very good option for you to uh, get a job okay right so um of course linkedin is a very good place because a lot of talent pool look at uh, you know jobs there and uh, daily a lot of jobs are being posted another platform being which which is dominantly being used by the recruiters these days are insta hire and also you can tap to nokri.com which is one of uh, one of the known platforms where people look at jobs right uh another bit being that uh, which which i would suggest to follow an approach that reach out to recruiters directly on over linkedin it will help them uh, 
you know, it'll help you to uh, you know expedite your process and uh, you know get reach to them another uh, suggestion would be that make sure that if you're following any company uh, uh, directly go to their career pages and apply uh, on their portal uh, of course so so that's also an option if you want to follow an approach so yeah okay so thank you so much ramni for answering all the questions i hope that helps for people and yeah thanks for joining and and yeah yeah make sure to like share me that uh, link uh, uh, form so that i can share also people like i would suggest you try to connect to ramneet also since he is also hiring for different devops engineers we can send you resume you can just send a connection request and you can send your resume so th- that will help ramneet also because since see uh, on over linkedin so many hrs are present who are looking for candidates okay even right. since it is not very easy to find candidates correct candidates so if you have enough skill sets uh, and all you can connect to them directly you can send your resume and ask you okay this is my requirement this is what role i am looking for so if your uh, if your resume and skill sets align with the requirement they will connect to you okay yeah okay Ramin. thank you so much aditya for having me here uh, it was great time uh, and thank you so much everyone okay. bye thank you everyone.